Hello and welcome to the latest edition of IAFA Insider. Your usual host, Emmett Ryan of Action 81, is still enjoying his holidays, so I'm afraid you're stuck with me, Stephen O'Rourke of thescore.ie, for at least one more week. On this week's show, I'm joined by Brendan McAleese of the North Kildare Reapers, whose team earned a rare away win in the IFL 1 and they beat the Dublin Dragons 2-0 on Sunday. I'll also speak to Brendan about his concerns regarding a rookie team being promoted from that division to the Shamrock Ball Conference next year, and just why we've had such low-scoring games in the IFL 1. I was also due to speak to the Belfast Trojans about their game with the Dublin Rebels on Sunday, but as there remains some confusion as to the official result of the game, I've decided not to carry that interview. For those of you who don't know, the Trojans were leading 35-0 deep in the third quarter when the game was abandoned after a serious injury to a Rebels player. Thankfully, we hear that player has now left hospital, but the final result of the game remains unclear. And now to matters on the field. I started by asking Brendan McAleese of the North Carolina Reapers just how his team's 2-0 win against the Dublin Dragons played out on Sunday. Again, it was a pretty blustery day, so we had aims on doing quite a bit of passing. Uh, this league is very run-heavy, I think, at the moment in the AFL 1 mainly because they're rookie teams and the offences aren't as uh, let's say proficient as they would be higher up the divisions. Defences usually work well, which turned out in this game with a 2-0 result. Uh, Defences again were very, very heavy and they dominated on the on the offence. Uh, you can see on both sides of the, of the ball the offences are not Really, not proficient. That's not proficient. They're, they're still learning their blocking techniques. Defenses find a way through easily. Uh, and you, what you what you do get is uh, drives going in spurts and then stalling, going in spurts and then stalling again. Uh, the game overall, that's the way it went. Really, I wouldn't. I'd say it'll get better as the season progresses. One of these days, you're going to get a real breakout score. When the offences actually start to click. Uh, overall, I'd say the game, the game should have been probably something like 21-14, but because of the stuttering offences, it ended up with, with, with the uh, just the safety result. And that win then puts you top of joint top of the division with four points. Um, but it's also the first away win any team has achieved this season in the IAFL one. Why do you think home advantage is proving so crucial in in that division? Home advantage, I think it's just because the teams feel a, bit, a lot more comfortable. Uh, probably a lot of these guys aren't used to travelling, to travel a fair distance. Uh, they just like their own surroundings, it's like any, really it's like any sport. They've got their home support there, they want to do better at home. Uh, and of course the away team, of course they want to prove them wrong, which we did on, on Sunday. And I think that as I said, towards the end of the season, you're going to see teams winning more away games that, uh, as they get their offences clicking a bit better. And obviously, you guys are, are a relatively new team, um, though you've been in development for, for quite some time. But how's, um, how is the reality of a fully kitted 11-a-side football compared with the expectations you had going in? Well, what I find is I came from I the night that football was shot back to the Craig Avenue Cody Boys a long time ago, back in the 80s and 90s. And I came in when they were just developing from DV8s into 11s and actually made the point when I came in as a defensive coach that you're going to find one hell of a difference when you jump from 8 to 11 because it's a lot less space and everything will speed up. And I think that's what they're really coming to grip and the terms with on offences in this league is the teams coming up from DV8 to 11 have found themselves having to react a lot faster the blocks have to come off a lot faster. And the defences, of course, there's three extra players covering the ends around the middles. And that's where the main problem is, I would say. But they will they will adapt as long as they continue to train properly and come up with ways of beating your defence with 11 instead of 8. So the, actually the speed guys that were on the outside in the 8s haven't got that room anymore. So they have to come up with different methods for gaining your yard. And of course, there's there's still a long way to go in the season, but you have to be happy with with the start the the Reapers have oh, made. We're, we're absolutely delighted. I mean, to beat two and one and join first, well, it's actually the one if we would have the head to head on us, and of course, we are top. But, but uh, we are we are moving, and well, any result with a W in it is a result. But I mean, 
mean, none of us, especially myself, in the offensive coordinator, was not happy <laughs> with scoring nothing on the defense scoring a safety. It's, it's, uh, as a former offensive coordinator myself, I can completely agree with you there. <laughs> but, uh, uh, well, I mean, you have to be thinking about making a promotion put, push at this stage. So after that, that sort of start, a 2 and one start. Oh, definitely. We're, we're, we want to win it. Don't get us wrong. That we want to win it. I'd just be very worried about a team from this division at the level they're in, jumping up into the pin to go up and get the likes of the Trojans or Kai Fergus Knights or the Rebels or anything. I'm afraid, I'm afraid of a team getting totally demoralized. If they went up and they thought they could compete the same, they need to be really ready. But a team, as a team in this division was winning 20 nil, 20 beating teams and scoring consistently, they'd, they'd probably be ready to go into the SPC. But at the scoring rates that they're going now, I could see problems for teams jumping up in their first, especially the first year. The, the problem would be staying together for the first year they go up and hoping they can, they can, they can at least compete at, at one level, even though they may be losing their games, but stay together for the, the to make the second season out of it. So you would be really looking, I suppose, for teams to, to really start breaking out and getting used to the, their playbooks before you be comfortable with them being promoted at the end of the season? Yeah, that's the way they should be because I think that it would just be an annihilation, basically, if they go up at the stage they're at now. I don't think they realise that they, that they never played at that level themselves and you don't realise the differences between the level that, the, that these, teams, these rookie teams are at now and the teams in the SPC. With the experienced players. So listen, uh, Brendan, thank you very much for your time, and best of luck with the rest of the. And that was Brendan McAleese of the Norkel Dare Reapers, who I think you'll agree provided quite a bit of insight not just into his own team, but into the challenges and potential rewards facing all rookie teams in the IAFL One. Moving on to last weekend's results, we still don't have official confirmation of the result between the Trojans and Rebels, so we'll park that for the moment. But the Dublin Rhinos kept their playoff hopes alive thanks to a 7-0 win over the Craig Avon Cowboys, while Trinity picked up a 30-0 win and moved to the top of the IFL South without playing a single snap thanks to the sad demise of the Cork Admirals. Now, the Reapers' 2-0 win over Dublin Dragons was the only fixture in IFL 1 last weekend, but this weekend the Mead Bulldogs host Tullamore Phoenix in what could prove to be a pivotal game in the race for promotion from that division. In the Shamrock Bowl North, Belfast Trojans travel to Carrick Fergus to take on the Knights, while in the South, UCD and Trinity will clash in the Colours game in Belfield. And I'm afraid that's all we have time for this week. If you like what you've heard, feel free to follow me on Twitter at Steve O'Rourke. That's Steve O'H Rourke. Thanks for listening to IFA Insider. Emmett should be back next week, but in the meantime, I've been Stephen O'Rourke from the score.ie. You've been a wonderful audience. Thanks 